Well, for me, I think the fact that in this day and age a group of people are being singled out for this kind of treatment, um, it's, it smacks of the old pogroms that used to go down against the Jewish people in, uh, in Eastern Europe where people come in and on the basis of hearsay evidence and whatnot, you single them out, you destroy their lives, you ruin their careers. And I think the real issue here is the Navy policy involved in allowing this to happen. In Southern California, on my left is Susan McGreevy, R-E-I-V. The investigation appears to have started around May the 15th when some officers, um, three Naval Investigative Services officers by the name of Page, Stevens, and Edge went on board the ship to make an investigation about two stabbings which had taken place on the ship. Um, this is speculation. Apparently they were told that somebody, that there were some lesbians on board the ship and what were they going to do about it. In any event, a, an investigation according to the Navy's press release went forward rel relative to 24 women. What we do know is that the way you got your name on that list was that several sailors on the ship were given a manifest, that is a list of all of the women sailors on the ship and told to check, put a check next to the person who they thought would be, was a homosexual, whoever they thought was a homosexual. And that's how you, they apparently got caught up in this investigation. Um, we don't know all of the people that checked that list. The one person we do know who, who checked the list said that when she received it, um, there were already red checks on the list. <clears throat> she apparently did check. Um, at that point, somewhere around the 27th, 28th, and 29th of May, these 24, 12, we know that 19 of them eventually received these papers which uh, indicated that they were being for that they are willing to attend a press conference. When they told the Navy that they were willing to see the press, they were told that if they did so, it would be a violation of the Uniform Code of Military Justice and that they could be prosecuted for that. And so until the Navy apparent makes a decision to allow them to speak to the press, um, there's really nothing that the press, is, they're not available to the press. The president of the uh, check. Steps you're planning to take. Um, at this point, the American Civil Liberties Union is planning to go into federal court to, re um, to try to obtain uh, a temporary restraining order prohibiting their being processed, processed out of the service until the constitutional issues in question are adjudicated by, uh, by the court. When do you plan to do that? As soon as we can get the paperwork together, which I would presume will be between Wednesday and Friday of next week. I think there's a step in between, however. I think the hearing board, all they're saying is that they've been, they have, they are unsuitable for the service because of homosexual acts, and Navy re regulations say that if this is not a charge, and they can just have the paperwork started and be processed out. Are any of the women so I think they're playing semantic games with us. Are any of the women involved, uh, have they been in the service longer than the eight years, so that another kind of process... One of them has been in the service over eight years. Um, what they, she's been in the Air Force, in the reserves, and the Navy is saying that it's eight consecutive years. Our reading of the Bue Purse Manuals is that she is entitled to a hearing, even though her time in the service is not consecutive, and I have so advised her that she's, in, that we know, we are, we are stating that she categorically, at least among them. And for those of you, um, an officer of the USS Norton Sound, Fleet Post Office, FPO San Francisco, California, AV1 and then some other language I don't know. Two blank subject administra administrative separate 19 of these. All right. You are informed that actually gone out by the courts within the last five or seven years as being unconstitutional on three t three occasions, and uh, a re regulation which is very similar to this regulation was re was thrown out three weeks ago in Milwaukee. And I think that's one of the really irritating things is that the Navy does not appear to be listening to the courts in this issue. All right. You are, in, uh, as of January 2019, to recommend you for administrative separation from the Naval Service by reason of unsuitability. This action is being taken because of participation in homosexual acts. They're not even charging them with tendencies. They're charging them with acts. Okay. You are afforded 
the opportunity to request or waive any or all the following privileges in writing. This is what they are entitled to. To be represented by counsel, a lawyer within the meaning of Article 27B, Uniform Code of Military Justice. B, to submit a statement in your own behalf. And C, to waive the above. I think it's time for the White House and for the Navy to look at it. Um, I think this business of mass um, clear hunting on the part of Naval Investigative Service, which has a whole division which is funded by taxpayers' dollars to do nothing but clear hunt. Um, I don't know what amount, but it certainly would be nice for the press to find out for us um, how much money is spent on this every year. They open people's letters. The, the waste of human talent is unbelievable to me. And it's time for this to stop, and it won't stop until the public says we've had enough. And Mr. Brady, you said they are still paying by protecting security and morale. But they're not talking about only jobs, they're talking about the performance. Read the Shalom case. Yeah, right there. I would like to read you a. Does the naming not have.